Back with you, homecoming, uh, just uh, an interesting Rocky thing for all the, well, I say all of them, but many of the students and the, the band members, and so on, they form a, a line and the players are introduced and come out, and right now we've got the captains out there. Let me give you the officials first of all, the captains for Grass Hill and the young captains for Homer Center. The officials tonight, Jim Mashinsky is the referee, Gene Pagratsky is the umpire, John Visnovsky is the line judge, Bob Burns is the uh, lineman, and the back judge is Tom Hoover. And it is just a beautiful night tonight, warm evening, and a great night for homecoming. You should have a great match up here. Quad captains for the Blairsville Bobcats, Mark Swanson, Rob Graves, Chuck Whitfield, and also for Blairsville, Chris Unkerford for the Homer Center Wilds. And Scott Walker, Blairsville's won the toss. They have elected to proceed in the other round. Blairsville with victories over North Star and Portage losses purchase line and United in succession. Kick taken by an up man that swans in at the 22 yard line across the 25, 30, 35, left side line, 40, still on his feet. Finally flung out of bounds at the 45 yard line by Tim McAuliffe. Great run back by Mark Swanson. Up to about the 45, they'll put it down at the Blairsville Bobcat. Well, they'll put it down at the 45-yard line. Well, he's a fullback, and he's going back like a fullback, and he's going to get it out. Excellent field position here as well as the first place. Yeah, very good. Split to the left for the Blairsville Bobcats comes John Ivanko. Joel Bauer is the quarterback. Willie Howes is the fullback. The tailback is Swanson. They're going to give it to the flanker. That's Rob Graves around right in near midfield where he's tackled near sideline. Run out of bounds. Scott Kobach on the stop and Tony Arone, but a five-yard gain for Robbie Graves. He lined up in that left slot position, and Bowers handed him the uh, football. Coming left to right, he picked up five. Had the choice that we're going to play power football tonight. We have two fullbacks in reality, Swanson and Hauser. They lined up in a power high, strong left. Graves was the other man, and he got the ball. Near sideline comes Ivanko for Blairsville. And the fullback, Hauser and Swanson in the backfield. Bowers is going to give to Swanson. He's stacked up and hit hard after a gain of one, possibly two yards. McCoppin, Patterson teaming up for the over center Wildcats. Ivanko coming split near side. Ball practically in the center of the football field. Bauer is going to run the option right. He pitches it to Graves. Graves in trouble. Down he goes for a loss. Fumble the football, but they're going to say he's down. Good defensive play by the Homer Center Wildcats. Tony Rohn, Tim McCoppin, again Jim Frain over here to assist. A loss of four yards, maybe five. It'll bring up fourth down and eight. The punt team's on the field for the Bluttersville Bobcats. The punter is Joel Bowers, and Joel on the season among the leaders in the area, averaging almost 36 yards per punt. Kovach dropping back for the Homer Center Wildcats with Matt Lee. Kick away, it's going to bounce. They're going to let it uh, roll. Kovach, now he picks it up at the 15-yard line to the 20, 25, up to the 30-yard line. Good play by Kovach. He got the nice, convenient hop. I thought for a moment, Jack, he was going to let it roll, but picked it up and able to return it 15 yards. Brian Farah, one of the tacklers. Nice return. And so Homer Center the Clock started. Senior quarterback Mark Mistretta under center Ryan Suchirelli. Kovac split to the left. The backs are in the eye. Timmy Jones and Jason Buggy now they move the tight end to Roan from left to right. They send Jones in motion near sideline and they give it to the fullback Buggy. Puts his head down, barrels for a couple of tough yards. Stacked up defensively by the Blairsville Bobcats. Jason Martin. Martin, the big defensive tackle, 6'1 junior, 100. 65 pounder. Gain of about three, though, for Buggy. Place coming in from the owner center bench. Coming in, Steve Mydock and Brian Anderson going out. Gain of three, second down seven. Mistretta looking things over. The Southpaw senior quarterback wears number seven on his white jersey. They give again right up the middle. Buggy breaking it for first down yardage. Puts his head down to the 45-yard line. Buggy, good hard-nosed running. 
And he'll pick up about 13 yards over the right side of that uh, offensive line, opening up a Powers on the stop for the Blairsville Bobcats, but a gain of 14 yards for Buggy and uh, good hard nose running by Jason. Powers was holding on to the air, Mike. You know, when you, you get into certain situations, uh, you play both ways, and that's Bowers' situation. Quarterback on offense, safety man on defense. Last week, Homer Center took it right at Salzburg, rolling up nearly 300 yards on the ground. Good start here. And uh, I think the right guard for the Homer Center Wildcats jumped early. That could be the sophomore. They give to Jones over the right side, trying to get around right end. He can't quite do it. He'll pick up about three. Swanson on the stop for the Blairsville ball. That's along with Bill Lenhart. Gain of three. Well, they put it down at the 44-yard line of the Wildcats. Almost a four-yard pickup. It'll be second down and a short 12 for Homer Center. McCoppin in the left slot. Backs are in the eye. Jones in the backfield with Buggy. They're going to run the option left. Mistretta keeps it. 45-50. Uh, Sidesteps a tackler at the 45. He has a first down to the Blairsville 41-yard line. Some fancy footwork by Mark Mistretta on the quarterback keeper. It was an option left, and Mistretta saw that they took the pitch away from him. Jack Wisely held on to the football and picked up good yardage and uh, made a nice little move at the Blairsville 45-yard line, which enabled him to pick up five more. Good yard run for Mark Mistretta. Did a lot of dancing, as you mentioned, done by Bowers and the company, and finally brought down. Picks up 15 in the first down for him. Good 15-yard pickup at the Blairsville 40-yard line. Mistretta sets the offense again. Blairsville almost jumped, but they hunt on. Give up the middle to Jones. Jones has four tough yards. On the stop for the Blairsville Bobcats, skating up off the bottom of the uh, stack. Brian Farah, he had some help. Great. Or Willie Hauser, that was. Greg Kunkel, I think, also in the area. Gain of almost five, though, for Timmy Jones. Great game last week by Jones. Jones and Steffi really did a terrific job last week. The uh, referee right now is going to be, uh, Homer Center is going to say, stop us, and Blairsville is going to say the same thing, stop us, and in between we're going to see a few passes, but not too many. Homer Center averaging about 150 on the ground in their first four games. Mistretta again sets his offense. He's going to give over the right side buggy, try to get around right in. Uh -uh, he won't do it. He fumbled the football. It's on the ground, and I think the Blairsville Bobcats have it. They do. Homer Center turns it over. Blairsville has it. When we return, 6.54 to play in the first. We're scoreless. We're listening to Wildcat Football 90 on 1160. Just the one. Just the one. with the carry up the middle for a gain of a couple. On the stop for the Homer Center Wildcats, Patterson. Mark, that fumble recovery was by Joel Bowers. Buggy got through and it looked like he had daylight, but the only thing was he forgot the football. Somebody stripped it from him, but that thing was bounding around all over the place and Bowers came up with it. So now Blairs for second down. Split to the, to the right, Robbie Graves. To the left, Johnny Banco. Second down and eight, Bowers straight back to pass. Looking right, fires it, fluttering. It's gonna be way short. Bowers not with a good aerial there on the coverage. The pass intended for Graves on the coverage. Matt Lee and Scott Kovach. Kovach was right with Robbie Graves that time. Bowers 0 for 8 uh, last week against United. He's back to pass again. Rolling right, being pressured by Frame. Fires, and he has his man, but it's dropped. Graves to pass a little bit behind him. He had it in his uh, mitts and let it fall to the turf incomplete, and Bowers will be forced to punt again. It'll be fourth down and 8. He's about 215 yards in total offense. Homer center about 200 yards. Very close. The snap from center is a bullet. It's good. The kick is away. Low will be taken by Kovach at the 32-yard line. 35-40. Puts his head down. Gets to the 43. The Wildcats have the ball when we return. Tackle made downfield by Jim Garvin. Wildcat football 90 continues after this. <laughs> hey, Tom, just this 115. Just this 115, please. Just 
Sliding back and forth, but right now, Homer Center's turn. Good field position for the 3 no score. No Dan Steffi yet in the offense. Must be bothered by that injury. They send Jones in motion. Lone setback is buggy. They give him the football right up the middle. They go to Jason right away after the fumble. And a short gain of maybe one yard on the stop from in there and Willie Hauser. Gain of two, second down and eight. So he fumbles on one play. Wildcat defense stiffens and holds. The fumble doesn't hurt that much, and they give it right back to Jason. Probably a good idea. So we, hey, we didn't lose confidence in you. No, I think so. Like I said, he had some daylight. Somebody knocked it away, stripped it from him. Jeremy Michaelone in the offensive lineup. He splits to the left. Midoff to the right. Mistretto with the backs in the eye, and he keeps the ball. Again, they're running the option. Blairsville taking it away. Mistretto with a short gain of two this time on the stop for the Blairsville Bobcats linebacker Greg Capitosti. And again, Willie Hauser, he's been everywhere, that uh, nose guard for Blairsville. Well, we just see a good old-fashioned butter football here by these two teams. Grinding back and forth, butter out, a pass here or there. But no score. The ball is four minutes to go in the first period. And now third down for the Wildcats. Third down and six. We may see the first pass from Mistretta. He has mine off to the right, and he's back to pass. McCoppin also in their far sideline, and it's overthrown. It's intercepted by Graves at the 42-yard line. Pass intended, I think, for McCoppin, but Graves picked it off. It was right to him. Turnovers for the Homer Center Wildcats. Graves split to the right of Anko to the left. Hauser, the fullback. Swanson, the tailback. Swanson with the football off left tackle. Breaks a tackle. 45 to the 50, a gain of six. Swanson running over one Wildcat would be tackler. Might have been Patterson that made the initial hit, but uh, Swanson ran right through him. Tony Rowe comes down on the play. Good pick up for seven yards now, we would say. Ball just goes into Homer Center territory. There's the pick up. It's a ball of the 315 to play in the first quarter. We're scoreless. Jim Garvin, the six foot, 220 pound center, out over the football. Ivanko split to the right in the right slot. It's Robbie Graves. Ball on the left hash mark. And a flag on the play. Blairsville, I think, will be flagged for illegal procedures. Swanson on the carry. He stacked up in his own backfield, but that play messed up from the beginning. Now the fullback, Kyle, took a step. Chaps had to go, and Tony Chapel right now, in the backfield, these two guys, they've had to go to Hauser in the backfield, teaming up with Swanson, and at times, one will act as a tailback, and the other guy a fullback. They, they, sometimes, uh, they don't have to tell each other, I'm the tailback, you're the fullback. That's the kind of situation they're in. Have to feel a little bit for Abdatori, uh, Jack. Last year, it was the strike. <laughs> Split to the right, fullback is Hauser, tailback Swanson again, Graves in the left spot. Bowers has Graves in motion, left to right, right toward our broadcast location. Flag on the play, Bowers rolling to his right, Rob Patterson after him, and he has him, and down he goes, but uh, Bowers gets the pass off. They'll set up shop at about their own 20 yard line, and moving back now to about the 15. Kovach to the right, Lee to the left, snap from center is good, pressure on, kick away, it's high, short. Kovach coming up to the 22, fills it far sideline, he's bumped out of bounds by Willie Hauser of the Blairsville Bobcats. First and 10 for Homer Center. Kovach in the lineup split to the left, mine off to the right, and Mistretta's back to pass, far sideline, through the hands. That's Brian Anderson, not mine off. Mistretta threw a bullet, but Anderson. Mistretta struggling at the quarterback position. Rick Faust thinks the senior just puts too much pressure on him, and that causes some of his problems. Second down and 10. He's going to give to the fullback buggy. No, he is an option right. Pitch to Jones. Jones galloping to the 30 to the 35-yard line. Will be a couple yards shy of the first. Swanson on the stop for the Blairsville Bobcats. The left linebacker in Abdatori's defense. Jones will be stopped shy of a first down by about a yard. Good uh, play action that time by Mistretta and company. He ruled out the fullback, but he's not very well. And the Shredder runs the option pretty well, as they uh, indicated earlier when he kept it earlier this quarter. Right? Third down and one. Maybe look for Buggy to get it this time. They won't fake the dive. Mistretta looking things over, looks to his right, looks to his left, sets his offense. Long count, gives to Buggy. Buggy puts his head down, barreling for a first down out over the 40-yard line to the 41. 
on the stop for the Blairsville Bobcats. Captain Toasty for the Blairsville defense, the middle linebacker. But a gain of five and easily a first down for Homer Center as we approach the two-minute mark, 2.02, as they reset the chains and restart it. We're scoreless at Memorial Stadium in Blairsville. Mistretta, first and ten for the Wildcats, and Mark's back to pass, looking over the middle. He has Tony Arone for about nine yards into Blairsville Bobcat territory to the 48, tackled by Mark Swanson. Mistretta threw a bullet and a strike. Arone handled it easily, and a good gainer, close to first down yardage. They'll mark him shy about a half yard, but uh, good call on first down, and Mistretta, good execution to Arone. That was a good call because he keeps the defense close. First down, picking up nine. Now he down here, do what he wants, second and short. Mistretta in Blairsville Bobcat territory gives to Buggy. Buggy up the middle has another first down to Blairsville 45 yard line on the stop for the Bobcats. It was Capitosti one more time. Little linebacker. Exactly 60 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Homer Center on the march at the Bobcat 45. The ball practically in the center of the football field. Homer Center's turned it over a couple of times. They moved it pretty well in their first possession particularly. Twins to the right. Mike alone in the lineup. Mistretta takes his time, doesn't he? He's pretty poised for a senior quarterback keeper. And Mistretta breaks it 40 to the 35, and it'll be a first down. That time he caught Blairsville sleeping a little bit, I believe, Jack, and making the stop for Blairsville Bobcats. Joel Bowers and Jonah Banco, the quarterback and safety in Blairsville's defense. Mistretta had a big opening. That was a good call. He uh, took some time, but then went with the quarterback. He picked up about 11 yards. Statistically, Homer Center dominating here in the first quarter, but on the scoreboard, we're scoreless. First and 10 Wildcats, and the give to Jones. Jones fighting for yardage, breaks one tackle inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. Evanko on the stop, broke the initial hit by Willie Hauser. A gain of about seven as the first quarter comes to a close. We're scoreless. Second quarter action coming up on 1160 after these words. Sports director Jack Benedict, who will be making a personal appearance at Dean's Restaurant in Indiana for Pancake and Sausage Day on Monday. Oh, all right, thanks, Bart, for the promo. High formation here, and Mistretta gets to his fullback, and Buggy barrels off the left side. He's got a first down, and he's flying through the air. And Swartz finally goes down, and he's got some good yardage inside the 20 yard line, down around the 8th. Another first down. That's five first downs for the center. Uh, up at seven or eight yards by Jason Buggy. This drive started. At the Homer Center 28-yard line, which actually marked was the worst field position in the quarter for Homer Center. Mm -hmm. Time out on the field. Blairsville is called for time. Ten ball getting the buggy off the left side and gets to near the 60 to pick up a three. Second down, seven to go. Get on the stop for uh, Hauser was in on the stop for the uh, Blairsville Bobcats. Boy, no contest in the yardage. Mark. Total yardage thus far, Jack, including that play, 81 yards for the Homer Center Wildcats, only seven for the Blairsville Bobcats. We saw buggy two. The Homer Center looking to put it in the end zone, of course, but if, if they stall. Time out on the field right now. Well, as we mentioned earlier, when you have a kick, especially in high school, you've got another dimension. Flanker to the right side, Kovach, split end to the left. In the eye formation, top of the tandem is Jones. Ball to 15, it's second down six. The spread of the senior quarterback gives to Buggy, and he just you know, drives his way right up the middle. Farrah up high, down around the ankles. It's Hauser again. Three third down here. And five to go for the Wildcats. The ball is positioned at the 14-yard line. The Blairsville Wildcats. Most four, second quarter, and we're early. Jeremy Michaelone 
bringing in the play from assistant coach Gary Leesoff, who's been calling many of the plays for the Homer Center Wildcats. Now Homer Center needs a timeout. Third two. Third and five. Third and five at the 14. He's got the option. He cuts it up and he barrels his way. He knocks up the tackle. He picks up a first down. He got by Swanson and Mark Mosqueda kept on going and finally in the secondary they got him down. That's the first down for Mosqueda at the 8 yard line of Nice run by Mistretta. He's been effective carrying the ball here a couple of times. Again, total offense. Lersville with only seven yards. The Homer Center Wildcats approaching the century mark with 10 minutes, 25 seconds to play here in the first half. They have a first and goal at the Bobcat seven and a half yard line. Three receivers to the right. Man in the slot is Kovach. And the eye in the backfield. The up back is Buggy, and he takes the call. He'll go straight. He's held straight up. Got about two yards in the play. We'll see where they mark his progress. Maybe just a yard. Met head on in there by a host of tackles, including uh, Jamison and also Hauser. So now, you can see if uh, will try to keep driving it in, or if maybe they'll try to put one up and go to the corners. Second and goal. How do we always end up with all these wires? Huh? More wires than on the hospital. Everybody might be into us. Seven yard line. Split backs behind Mastretta. Slot man to the right is McCoppin. Receiver wide to the right. Here's a give to Buggy. Right up the middle he goes to about the five. And Bill Lenhart was the main man on defense who came over. 6'1", 205, a senior for the Bobcats to bring down Buggy. Third down now. Homer Center going uh, behind the right side of their offensive line. Patterson and Walker and company attacking the left side of the Blairsville defense. Lenhart and Hauser make sense because Rick Faust told me that the right defensive end, Mike Jamison, he thinks that, that Mike is their best defensive football player. They're going the opposite way. McCoppin will go to the left. Third and goal to four. And wide to the right side for Homer Center. We've got a wide out. High formation. The fullback is buggy. Mastretta barks it out. Fakes to the fullback. Passes over the middle. Wide open. Touchdown to Tony Arone. Homer Center's on the board. Tony Arone, the tight end, all by himself. And the Wildcats score. 8.41 to go in the second period. A 6 to nothing lead on that 82-yard, let's make it a 72-yard drive for Homer Center. Boy, an excellent drive for the Homer Center Wildcats, too. And Mistretta faked the dive and just looped it over a couple of Blairsville linebackers. Arun, as you called it, Jack was all alone. And Mistretta found him, and Tony made the big grab. He's been effective here this season. Michael over the hole, buggy kicking, snap the ball down. It's a line driver to the right. Kick it through, no, it missed. Right, right to the right side for Homer Center. We've got a wide out. Formation. The fullback is Buggy. He's got a couple of linebackers, as I mentioned. And Buggy, the man they picked it to, has it teed up. He's ready to kick off for the Homer Center Wildcats. A nice looking drive. Credit to Homer Center. Good job. Bobby Graves is straight away. Chuck Whitfield is to his right. Hi, Edward Moran. Graves settles under it. Sam, of course, uh, filming for the Homer Center Wildcats. Grandma Arone, thank you very much. I'm going to be up after the game for some more. I knew you would. Twins to the left, out of the eye formation. Joel Bowers is the quarterback, gets to the deep back, and he has no where to go. Swanson carrying the flag on the far side of the field over there. Mark Swanson carrying the football. Big, strong fullback. Pick up with the marker here. The penalty might be, as the officials confer. The motion against Blairsville. He gave it that play. Okay, let's talk more some about those. Uh, yeah. Two forks you didn't send, though. I know you were upset about <laughs> yeah, that. <I> was. <laughs> well, we have a moment, too, Jack. The big gang of fans up at the Sons of Italy penalty declined by the Wildcats. It'll be second down and 10. No game for Swanson. Gang of fans listening to us up at the Sons of Italy in Homer City. John Sheets, we want to pass along hello to him. It's Mike Malacker. Thank them for tuning us in this big ball game here at Memorial Stadium in Blairsville. Right now, 6 0 Homer. Penalty to Park, second down, 10 to go. Back penalty gives Bowers, sets up, throws over the middle, diving at him. That's the field about 10 or 12 yards in the pass from Joel Bowers to Johnny Vanko. Is that complete? Last week, in a losing cause, a heartbreaking loss for Blairsville against United 15 to 14. He's 0 for 4 here this evening. So Joel misfiring on his last 12 pass attempts. 
Maybe he needs to change the number 13 on his uh, uniform. Well, he's a good all-around athlete. Yes, We've, he is. We've uh, watched him in baseball and basketball, and, and of course, uh, you know he's a good athlete because he's the punter, he's the kicker, and everything else on this team. He's fiery to a competitor. He's got trips to the right side, and that's the way he looked back to pass, setting up, throwing, but it's incomplete on that rifle toss. Intending it again for Johnny McNeil, and Larrysville must put it away. Fourth down coming up. Good coverage, co match, buggy over there. Also for the Homer Center Wildcats, Jeff Galinsky getting a taste of action. Good coverage by the entire Wildcats secondary. Fourth down, again an excellent job for the Homer Center Wildcats. Blairsville stuck what, Bob Krynock, a statistician on about seven yards total offense in that area. They just snapped the ball to Joel, but he, as he gets the ball, a uh, whistle is blown. And we're going to see what that is going to mean. Officials timeout. And uh, the official, the referee, says to Joel, uh, I'd like to have the football back. And Bowers complies. Jim Lashinsky's the official, the referee. 11 right. yards total offense, 11 Jack. yards total offense. We have two receivers back, Lee and Kovach, and Bowers gets it away. It's a spiral. A line driver through the hands of Lee, fumbles the ball, and then he scores the ball. And did they get it behind him he was gonna, actually had his back to the play and he just fumbled it muffed it badly third turnover for homer center they uh, despite their miscues lead at six to nothing but they keep giving blairs no opportunities balls at the 41 and as the play unravels we have a whistle and play is stopped flags are down Blairsville keeps shooting themselves in the foot too. An illegal procedure penalty on the Bobcats. That's their fourth five. This time the bank comes to the left side and Graves goes to the right. The fullback is Housen, the tailback. Swanson is waiting for the tail spot. Second down 15. They give it to Swanson and he gets about a yard and now he's going to that ball, that defensive ball, the former center. Walker and company down there at Pondine. I'll tell you, they are playing tough. Second in rushing defense, giving up over 60 yards rushing. No gain, it's now second down and 15. Walker goes out. Let's see who replaces him in there. We've got uh, Comtai in there from the center. Now I see that George Roof, the senior, the babe, has just come in. <laughs> By George, he is in there. And uh, Bowers is repositioning Graves. He tells him to go to the far side of the field. They want twins to the right. Out of the eye formation. Second down. The quick pitch to Swanson. Drops the football. Dives for it. It's still loose. Looks like Blairsville has it. That was not a pretty play. And Blairsville continues to have a lot of holding on to the ball. I think Swanson also recovered. Yeah, it'll be a loss of three, though, for uh, Swanson. Fortunately, he bounced on it. I don't know if that was going to be a little bit of trickery. I think maybe the halfback option pass. I think so. I think he was going to pass it. From the former fullback, right? See, yeah, that is really strange. But he never, uh, well, he thought about passing it before he actually had his hands on it. And now, going the wrong way, Blairsville has a third down. They've got to go to the 31. They're at the 47. Third and 16. Twins to the right. Now here's to the left is Ivanko. Back to the nine. Man in motion coming this way. It's Graves. Now he drops back to pass. Sets up. He's in the pocket. Here he's going for Graves down here. Could be intercepted. He's intercepted by the ball. Does he have it? It's fine. Five, ten to go. Leading at six to nothing. The Wildcats second period. I formation. Mastretta gives good yardage right up the middle. It's Buggy. Buggy getting good yardage until secondary break. Kunkel knocks him down. But he advances from the line of scrimmage. The 18 and they'll put him down for 25 for seven. Second and three. It's a shame for Homer Center fans that, you know, you're not up 12, 18, nothing the way they've dominated this first half. Blairsville now with a couple of losses. They have to be under, what, 10 yards in total offense. Just total domination by Homer Center, but they only lead it six to nothing. High formation, two receivers to the left, man of the slot left, Kovac, and the bread and butter man up the middle for the first down is Jason Buggy. Buggy 
Kunkel brings it down. First down at the 32 of Homer Center. Kunkel for the stop and held down by Brian Farrell. Swanson, too, not to discredit Homer Center's first four opponents on the season, Winburn, Marion Center, Portage, and uh, also Salzburg. I don't want to take anything away from those four ball clubs, but I think this is the first real quality back that Homer Center has seen. Swanson is a top-notch back, and they are just stuffing him right now. Of course, it's early, and adjustments could be made, et cetera, but they are really doing a job defensively on Swanson, who has over 400 yards rushing. Seven first downs for the Wildcats. The deep back gets the ball, and that's Buggy who lined up in the tailback spot. Slanted for about four, and Lenhart was over to make the stop on him for at the choice. But Bill Lenhart, 6'1", 205, senior. And Shirley helped out second and six. Now they take out a uh, deep back in there, Hymas. Adam Steiger checks in. So we are at second down and six yards to go with the ball at the 35-yard line off Homer Center. McCoppin is the slot man to the right. Receiver to the right side. Six-nothing Wildcats lead. Buggy is the fullback. Ball goes to Jones. Jones, just a little open. It goes quickly. Probably forward progress. They'll give him a couple yards. Jack Jamison Swanson on the stop for the Blairsville Bobcats. Buggy, the leading rusher for Homer Center, 14 carries, 53 yards. Actually, that gain, yeah, it will be two yards, up to about the 37 and a half yard line. I think they gave him a break, and uh, they did give him an extra yard. Third down coming up now at the 37, third and four for the Wildcats. Under three minutes and rolling until halftime. Home coming here in Blairsville, Steve Mydon checks into the game. He is wide right. And Michael Ohm is also out here. He's the slot man from the eye. But they fake. Mastretta on the out and first down. Big yard. It's across the 50. Skips to the 45. The 40 down the sideline. 35 to near the 30-yard line. They're marking at the 32-yard line. Mark Mastretta with another outstanding line. 31 yards for Mark Mastretta. He may be the leading rusher for the Homer Center Wildcats. Now they put it down at the 33-yard line, so credit him with the 30-yard gain. An official timeout with 2.38. See how Mark lines him up. Twins to the right. Buggy the fullback. Jones the tailback. Back to the ground. Buggy slants. Stays on his feet. Great balance. Bounces outside 25, and he's close to a first down to the 23. We've got a marker down, though, in the vicinity of Swinney's, which is usually holding. What a nice run by Buggy. Mm -hmm. He Homer kept Center. great balance, and they are just pounding their way. But you called it holding the call on the Homer Center Wildcats. They'll back them up 10. We'll step out. 2.32 to play in the half. 6-0 Wildcats back after this. Yard penalty on the option play. The pitch goes to Jones down the sideline from the 43. A 30-yard line, but a 14-yard pickup for Tim Jones running out of the tailback spot. Mastretta again on the option. Remember now that was a 20-yard first down, a 20-yard play, and the game is 43. Where are they going to put it now? 30. 30. All right, 13-yard pickup. Mastretta again doing a good job, Jack, because he didn't. I didn't think he had a lot of. Uh, room to get rid of that ball and he found Jones. Timeout on the field. Blairsville is called second down and seven, Jack. Homer Center on a four-yard pass play from Mastretta to a row. Just outside the 30-yard line. He's got to go to the 23. Mastretta barks out the signals. He has two receivers to the right, split backs behind him. The senior southpaw quarterback hands off on the slant by picked up a couple. Bring up the ball will be marked at the 28-yard line, and so now third down coming up on a two-yard pickup by Jason Buggy. The top and out, or Michael Owens. Without any pressure on you, it's one thing. The defense and all, it's another. Right now, they're thinking first down, third down and five at the 28. And Mastretta this time drops back, sets, throws, and it's caught. Short game on the play. Alone, the tight end got it, tackled by Lenhart. And he is brought down for actually three yard pick up. It'll be fourth and two on the north side hash mark at the 23 of Blairsville. Now, Jim Homer Center, you may need a timeout to talk about it. Yep. Thank you. Very well. Twenty-five 
yard line of Blairsville. Big play, fourth and two homer center. Mastretta keeps it on the ground to Buggy. And he slants and he keeps driving. And let's see if he got it. He is mighty, mighty close. Mm -hmm. The spot will make the difference. It's first down. They didn't even have to measure. It gave him a good spot. He got about two and a half yards on the play. And it's a first down, almost a three-yard pickup for Jason Buggy. Let's credit the offensive line, that right side, starting with the center, Ryan Sucharelli, Rob Patterson, Scott Walker, the big 5'11", 260-pound senior, doing a good job on that uh, Blairsville line. And again, Jack, they continue to attack the left side of the Blairsville defense, and they've been successful. Why not? Two wide outs to the left, man in the slot over there is Michael O. The split backs behind Mistretta at the 22. Mark goes back, throwing on first down, throwing over the middle. He's got the pass completed. It's Mydock, and he stretches his way down to the five yard line. It's first and goal. Mistretta threw a strike again, and Mydock completed. Alzheimer was shaking out pretty bad, but he got off and he ran off under his own power, and that's what uh, really good. So he looks like he's. All right, he may see some actions walking in front of the bench down here. We have another timeout. Blairsville has called for time. Don't forget, coming up tonight at 1030 on 1160 WCCS, High School Sports Night with your host, Doug Steve. We'll be hearing from our network of student reporters covering all of the area action tonight. Doug will have scores on the Indiana High Little Indian game. They're traveling uh, to Plum, and we'll hear from our student reporter, Mark Rako. Purchase line at Salzburg. And again, uh, you'll hear it all, hear all about it here on High School Sports Night at 10.30 tonight. Right now, more importantly, first and goal for Homer Center at the five. Just outside the five. Split backs behind the strip. Good receivers to the left side. Homer Center, 108 to go, leading six to nothing. Gets given to Buggy. Bounces off to the end zone. Touchdown for Homer Center. Wildcats have scored it. This time it was an 82-yard drive. And Buggy scores. It's 12-0. Homer Center over Blairsville. You called it exactly right, Jack. Benedict bouncing off a couple of Blairsville Bobcat would-be tacklers. And I know that won't make Abitore very happy at all. When you have a chance at a guy and you let him off the hook and not one, two guys, Buggy bounced off two of them. Homer Center, I would think, even though the kicking tee is on, you'd think about going for two since you didn't make the first conversion. They have called a timeout. They're going to talk about it. We'll step out for a brief pause here. That 82 yards. And they lead it 12 to nothing, and they will indeed go for two. And they'll line up here with split backs, Jones and Buggy, behind Mistretta, and twins to the left side. Leading it 12 to nothing. Mistretta going to float to the left, looks over the middle, and throws into the end zone and through the hands of Tim Jones. He was wide open for it. taking it in from five and Buggy kicking it off. And it is a squibble. It's going to be tough to handle. And they're trying to pick it up. Swanson finally gets it. It goes down to the 15-yard line. That is the toughest kind of play to make down there. And Jeremy Michael will made the hit. Blairsville has terrible field position here at their own 15 with just a minute remaining. Exactly one minute. They restart the clock. And uh, I don't think Blairsville has a timeout left. Homer Center may have one. And you would expect things to end rather quietly here this final minute. Well, let's see if they play it safe. The twins to the left side. And Joel Bowers comes out under center as an eye for Mason. Pitches to Swanson, coming to the near side. Gets a block in the 20, finds a hole, 25, and he gets up near the 30-yard line. Nice run by the big fullback. He picked up nearly 15 on the play, maybe even 16. First down. Well, they put him at the, yes, 26-yard line of the pickup of 11 yards in the play from the 15 to the 26. Right, a pickup of 11, 30 seconds to play in the half. Blairsville keeping it on the ground. Let's see if they uh, try something here, putting it in, in the air. We'll find out. 24 seconds and counting. Single setback, trips to the right. Single, oh, here, rolling to the right side. Looking to throw, downfield. Jumping with the top ball, Graves at the pick up. No, it's complete. Graves cutting across the field with the midfield strike. Where's the left hand sent trips to the right side and seconds to go. High formation, flanker right, split back, and a split end to the left side. Number 26, Hymas takes the snap, drops back, looks the throw, winds up and hurls it downfield. It's incomplete. Coverage by Jeremy Michael. Only thought he should have had another one. His tenth receiver was Greg Dunkel. Pretty good throw all the way to the 42 of Homer Center. Yeah, Bowers is back in. He takes the snap, drops back. He looks to run. He's in trouble. Dances out, tries to run, and they bring him down from behind. A gain of about three or four on the play. Bowers on a beautiful. Joel Bowers 
Bears will kick off from left to right, and here we go, and back to the third period. Kickoff taken by Matt Lee at the 8, out over the 10, 15, 20, cuts at the 25, fighting for yardage, and he's down near the 28 on the stop for the Blairsville Bobcats, Greg Kunkel. It'll be first and 10 for Homer Center. We'll see where they put the football down. Well, they nose of the football, a good spot for Homer Center, right on the 30-yard line. Total domination for Homer Center in the first half. We'll see how the Blairsville Bobcats possibly adjusted. Homer Center, Jack, gave Blairsville a lot to think about. It wasn't really a one-dimensional attack. A little bit of the option, a little passing attack up the middle a little bit. And let's see what they do here now as they start the second. Mistretta setting his offense. First and 10, Homer. And they give to the fullback. Buggy breaks it at the 35 40, spins his way out over the 45 to the 48 yard line. A gain of 18. Buggy popping it up the middle. And before you know it, Robbie Graves uh, in the secondary bringing him down, the cornerback on the left side. But a 19 yard gain for Buggy. And he ran hard, ran with authority, ran over a couple of players. And well, actually, they put it down at the 47, so a 17 yard pickup for Buggy. Showing great balance tonight. He's being bounced around from side to side. But I'll tell you, he's doing an outstanding job, and the rushes keep on coming for Homer Center. First and 10 at the 47. Buggy with the call again, and Buggy answers the call, fighting 50 to the Blairsville 45 yard line. He keeps the legs churning again. Graves in on the stop along with Swanson for the Blairsville Bobcats, but not before Buggy picked up nine more inside the Blairsville 45 yard line, just running with great authority and determination. Well, last week it was Steffi and Joan, and this week it's Buggy, so there's no one star in that backfield. And Jason Buggy's just been tremendous here tonight. Hard driving, he's near the Buccaneer yards. Second down and one for Homer Center. We'll see if they gamble, maybe, and put it up in the air. No, back to the bread and butter buggy. He fumbles the football. He puts his head down. I think he pounced on his own fumble, and he did at the 40 yard line of the Bobcats. He just re literally ran over a Blairsville Bobcat that may have been a uh, uh, couple for Blairsville. Well, I'll tell you who we covered. It looked like Buggy did, but I put the glasses on it, and in fact, John, Joe Conti recovered the fumble. Buggy, when he barreled over that run, the ball popped out. Conti recovered first down. At the 40 for the Homer Center Wildcats in Blairsville territory. Anderson to the left. Kovac split to the right. Backs are in the eye. Homer Center jumped. It'll be a five yard mark off on the Wildcats. Really, everybody out of sync. I think every uh, lineman uh, moved. And that may have been the center, Ryan Suchirelli, with the uh, error that time. When you see all of the linemen move and Mark doesn't have the ball, you have to believe that maybe it's the center, Ryan Suchirelli. And he's, an, he's entitled to a mistake. That's kind of like a, a team mistake there. Everybody on the right. Suchirelli in the middle. And he's making the offense. He's at 92 yards right now. He's good looking sideline to get the play. First down and 15 for Homer Center at the 45. Anderson to the left. Looks like McPoppin in the lineup now to the right. Mistretta, play action, going to run the option left, and they're going to fling him to the ground right at the line of scrimmage. On the stop, Greg Kunkel. The sophomore, 6-foot, 175-pounder, grabbed Mark's jersey and spun him to the turf. Gain of uh, maybe a yard inside the 45. Call it no gain, actually. Second down and 15. They were trying to run the option left, and Blairsville took it away from them that time. In the line, Dave Hindemeyer has just checked in. He's a senior, 5'10", 180 pounds. And now a long yardage to go. That's on the second down for the Wildcats. They've got to go to the 30 to get the first down. Kovach to the right, Anderson to the left. Buggy and Jones in the backfield for Homer Center. And Mistretta, play action, short drop, fires over the middle. Arun with a great grab at the 32-yard line. He's dropped by Joel Bowers and Robbie Graves. And Robbie Graves shoves uh, Scotty Kovach, but a great catch by Tony Arone at the Blairsville 32. It'll be a gain of 13 yards. Be third down and short, third down and two for Homer Center, but a tremendous catch by Rome. Well, that's one where you go over the middle and you know that you're going to get hit. And he made a great lunder catch, and now it's third and short. Arone lines up as the tight end on the right side, left slot. Now it's Jeremy Michaelone Anderson split to the left. Third. 
third and short, and they give to Buggy, and Buggy, I think, has a first down inside the Blairsville 30-yard line. He was tripped up by Kunkel, and also in and on the stop, uh, the tackle, J.W. Hauser, for the Blairsville Bobcats, but it'll be first and 10 for Homer Center. They continue to grind it out and just dominate this ball game. They're picking up right where they left off in the first half. Mark, in the first down, that's number 13 for Homer Center. Blairsville has one. Anderson and Kovach come to the left. Again, Tony Arone, the tight end on the right side. Jones lines up as the tailback. 100-yard rusher last week. Buggy, the fullback, having a big night. They're going to give it to Jones. Jones trying to scoot around the right end. He gets a little bit of yardage to about the 26-yard line. A pickup about, of about three for senior Tim Jones. And on the stop for Blairsville, Lenhart, and also... Brian Farrow. Joe showed great patience that time. He didn't try to move too quickly, and he was smart. He stayed right behind his fullback. Buggy was blocking, and Joe just kind of uh, stutter stepping his way three yard pickup. Second down and seven at the Blairsville 26 yard line. Kovach in the left slot. Anderson, or check that, that's Steve Midoff lining up as the split end to the left. Ball on the right hash mark. Wide side left, and they give up the middle. Buggy breaks one tackle, forges ahead for a couple of tough yards. On the stop, Greg Capitosti for the Blairsville Bobcats. Capitosti, one of the linebackers, a junior, 5'8", only 150 pounder, but he had his nose in on that tackle and brought down hard running Jason Buggy. A gain of a pair for Buggy. It'll be third down and five, the football at the Blairsville. 24-yard line. Yeah, we've given up. Uh, look at the stats here. 182 yards a game rushing and total 243. So defense has been a problem. But again, the coaching staff has had to reshuffle a lot of bodies this year because of injury situation. Homer Center is running the ball real well. Maybe uh, they've had that pass open over the middle. We'll see if they do that or keep it on the ground. They're in four-down territory. Mistretta back to pass, fires over the middle, and he has his man for a first down on the reception. Steve Midock down around the 12-yard line for Homer Center. Little look-in pattern and goes for a diving catch. That's exactly what he did. And Mistretta is uh, pinpointing. We mentioned he didn't have good stats coming in, but he's moving the puck goes on the ground and through the air. Mark six of eight in the ball game, first and 10 at the 12, and Mistretta gives to Buggy. Buggy spinning has the 10 yard line, and that's about all. Capitosti, the linebacker, making the stop for the Blairsville Bobcats. A gain of only two, it'll be second down and eight at the 10 yard line. You know, as much as we call Capitosti, the name is really a figure that uh, pretty good shot. The only 150 pounder, Frank Getty performer, 5'8, 150, making the stop. And now just inside the 10, Wildcats driving for more. They have had the ball since this quarter began, and it's five and a half minutes and counting. Better than six and a half minutes that possess the ball. Minock and Mike alone to the left. Mistretta is going to give up the middle and stacked up right near the line of scrimmage. Good defense that time by the Blairsville Bobcats. Mark Swanson busting through. That's what we call a kiss. Did he fumble the football? He did, Jack, and Blairsville has it. Center's fourth turnover. If it, believe me, if it's not for the uh, turnovers tonight, this is a blowout so far. And there's still a lot of uh, clock, uh, you know, a lot of time on the clock. Better than a quarter, five minutes to play. And Blairsville still in this football game. First and ten. Bowers gives to Swanson. Swanson, tough running room, out over the ten yard line. Maybe a gain of two for Mark on the stop. The coppin in there. Had some help from uh, some friends. I think Jason Buggy had his nose. Gene Podransky, the umpire. Line judge is John Wisnowski. The uh, field judge is Bob Burns. And Tom Hoover, the back judge. Bowers again giving to Swanson. Swanson up to about the 15-yard line, shy of a first down. The coffin on the stop along with Rob Patterson for the Homer Center Wildcats. But it will bring up third down. And a long three for Blairsville. 4.15 to play here in the third quarter. This game moving along at a pretty good pace. Nine o'clock hour. Wildcat Blairsville football on 11.60 WCCS Homer City. IEP in Towson State at Middle Stadium tomorrow. 1.30 kickoff will be on the air at 1 o'clock. And we'll have another homecoming next Friday night at Purchase Line. They host. You're, you're kidding. Flag on the play. They blow it dead before it gets underway. Could be an illegal procedure on the uh, Blairsville Bobcats or possibly Homer Center line. Stop anyway. No, no matter what time you have. 
trips to the right here. Third down and nine. Bowers back to pass. Rolling right, being pressured. Fires downfield, spinning. Graves can't come up with it. Then almost intercepted by Kovach. Flag on the play, and we could have a roughing the pass, but we have a Wildcat down two. That's Patterson. Here's the breaking huddle. Their home uniforms, white pants, black jerseys, black helmets trimmed in white and orange. First and ten for... Blairsville, Bowers gets to Swanson. Swanson finding out of the power eye formation he gave it to Robbie Graves. Now the will operate from the eye here on a third down. Ivanko to the right, Graves split to the left, and again a five-yard motion penalty on Blairsville, a pitch and a fumble, and Swanson, I mean he is swarmed by McCuffin, Joe Conti, Tony Roan in there, also uh, Jim Frayne. Another flag too, and everybody else was hesitant, but uh, the play went on, and now Bowers will kick again. Boy, will he sleep well tonight. Mm -hmm. Kick is away. Low kick taken by Kobach at the 42 to the 45. Move at the 50. Breaks a tackle at the 48 and gets to the 46-yard line where Homer Center will take over when we return. A minute 47 to go in the third, and they lead it 12-0 over Blairsville. Hines coming into this football game on Blairsville's next possession. Bowers has been taking a beating here tonight, too. First and 10 for Homer Center at the Blairsville 46. Estrada giving it to is that, uh, Tim Jones with the football. Jones inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. Or that was Matt Lee. Check uh, that Matt Lee on the carry. So Jason Buggy getting a breather. A gain of three for Matt Lee. Is that his first carry? Bob Crinock, our statistician, our studio engineer. That was Matt Lee's first carry. Tom Goss, our studio engineer. Um, you mentioned that, uh, you know, it's not been anyone star in the back, but last week, couple mm -hmm. of other guys buggy tonight, so they passed the around. Second down and seven at the Bobcat 44. They're going to run the option left. Mistretta had nowhere to go. Couldn't pitch it to Jones. That was taken away by Blairsville's Mike Jamison, the uh, right defensive end. And getting to Mark Mistretta was Greg Kunkel to drop Mark, and he is shaken up now. Yeah, he, is, uh, he, you know, he was standing up. And standing and on Monday, 14 to nothing. Third down and eight. Tough uh, position to thrust the sophomore into. We'll see if they dare put it up, man. It's Anderson to the left. McCoppin in the left slot. Backs are split. And a row. We'll give to Buggy. Buggy puts his head down, barrels ahead for a yard or two, and that's about all. It'll be fourth down for Homer Center. The punt team more than likely will come on in the field for the Homer Center Wildcats. It'll be fourth down at six at the Blairsville 40 two yard line. Strata seems to be okay. He was chatting with him over there. He got hit up in the head area, but he seems to be all right. Quarters over by 9.32 yard line. Jason Buggy, the punter, standing in his own 45. And for fourth quarter action, here's Jack Benedict. And he just gets it away. And Bowers is back to receive. The ball will take the Blues will take another Homer Center roll and be down at the 8 yard line of Blues. Excellent kick by Jason Buggy. No return. And Blues has it deep in its own territory at its own 8 yard line. Tim Jones off the field under his own power. Did he go in the game? Blairsville first and 10 at the 8, and they have a new quarterback, sophomore Bernie Pinus. That's right, Bernie Pinus, 6 feet 165, gives it off the right side. And he has uh, no, no, he didn't. He kept the ball. Bernie Pinus, he got good guard, and that was the first down. I'll tell you why, Jack. He fumbled the snap. And everybody was diving for it. Bernie scooped it off the turf and uh, forced the head for a gain of seven. And an official's timeout here. This may be an equipment problem down there. The center to the quarterback. They're both new. We'll see if they uh, execute here. I formation. Receivers left and right. And the deep back. Swanson gets the ball right up the middle for short yardage. Looks like he's got the first down. Those are playing conservative. They're just trying to get some big muster. They're only up around 45 yards. Third down and a long one, Jack, for the Blairsville Bobcats. The football at the 27-yard line. They need every bit of the 28, or I'm sorry, the 18. It's at the 16-yard line. Buggy is out on defense. This time, drive to the left. This great number. Trips to the right side on third. 
third and short. Bad pitch. Swanson kicks the ball. It's up for grabs. It's still loose. Swanson has it. Lost lots of yardage. And Blairsville it's back to the ball. Back around the nine yard line. The line of scrimmage. They're going to have to get rid of it here. Fourth down with a little more than ten minutes to go. That was a uh, just a bad pitch. Bad play from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I think the sophomore quarterback may be a little overzealous there. He took the snap from center, turned and pitched wildly. Charging with a wild pitch, uh, possibly fourth down and forever. Bowers punting from his own end zone. Long snappers Brian Farrell. Bowers will kick it out of his end zone and he kicks it downfield where it's going to be set it under the 45-yard line. Right there by Scott Kovacs. He did the best thing. He fell on it. Homer Sherry blows their territory. Not really. First and ten, Homer Center at the Bobcat 45, Jack. Here we go on the first play. Mastretta back in, looks the pass. Oh, yeah. Intercepted or not? Yep, I yep think. it is. It is. He makes it. surprised by the play call with 9-10 to play and you're leading it 12 to nothing. You'd think you'd like to keep it on the ground and chew up the clock, but Homer Center trying to keep the Bobcat defense on us too and uh, didn't work that time. Some miscommunication. I think somebody blew a pattern perhaps. Bowers the quarterback. And Bowers back in there and they just uh, churned it right up the middle for some yardage from the 34 from about the 37 yard line that Swanson, Mark Swanson carrying the football. They'll actually say that he went down to the 36 feet with two second down and eight. And we have an injury. The Homer Center coaching staff rushing onto the field. Rick Files to Jack. Defense of this club all year. This is Bowers taking the snap, throwing the pass, and the Hopefully you'll join us, the 1160 sports team at Miller Stadium, IUP hosting Towson State. High formation, two receivers to the right, man on the slot is Ivanko, back to pass, short drop back. Pass is Midway through the fourth quarter, where we're approaching, they had a 14-0 lead against United. United came back, and a questionable call, we're told, at the end, but still set up a uh, game-winning touchdown for United. Credit for United. They came back and snatched uh, victory away from Blairsville, 15-14. to Blairsville's now maybe look, looking to do the same thing to Homer Center, although they have a ways to go. First down. It's Hauser. Hauser shows up. Keeps on going and picks up a couple of yards, four yards, actually, from the 49 to the 45 yard line again. Off uh, almost four, second down and six. Against them. Rainy in on the stop, seven minutes in the county. I think. Uh... Homer Center, they'll give uh, Blairsville, they'll let them run the ball all night uh, with only seven minutes to play and with a 12-point lead, and they'll also give them uh, that short stuff passing, that eight, 10-yard, uh, those patterns. Heck, give it to them all night because they only have a little over six minutes to work with. The banker and Graves to the right man in motion is the tailback, that is Swanson. They're looking to pass to him, up, throwing it over the middle. I think possibly a questionable call. I don't think that's a catchable. That could come back to haunt them. Let's hope not. 
First down, in to go, Blairsville at the Homer Center 15. Single set back is Swanson to the left side. He's going to He fumbled the football. He went to throw it. Trips going to the right side. Graves over there with Jackson and also Ivanko. A single set back. Bowers is going to roll to the right. That's the right side of the field. He tries to turn the corner. He looks downfield, throws the pass. It's complete. Jameson was the intended receiver of the tight end. Good coverage. Matt Lee and company over there for Humber Center. And it will be now third down. Also credit Jim Crane because he had Joel Bowers on the move. Joel, I think, was rolling to his right anyway, but uh, Crane, I think, made him rush the ball a little bit. And credit Jim Crane with a nice job defensively for Homer Center. Now it's third down in a uh, long seven at the 13-yard line. The Blairs will have to come up big. Should they score, they're going to have all kinds of momentum. Homer Center on the road for a little bit. Banco checks in. He goes to the right. by the Wildcats. They sure the blitz on the plane and backed off a little bit. And they thought, kind of caught Bowers in a vice, and it's fourth down now. And the ball goes eight to go. Fourth and seven is what they're calling it at the 13. Tony Arone with a good job for Homer Center and uh, some help from some other linemen. Blairsville is called for a timeout. 5.51 to play in the game. They trail it 14, or 12 to nothing against Homer Center. Wildcat Football 90 continues in a minute. Down seven at the 13 for Blairsville. Backpedaling Bowers looking, looking. He's got a man over the Graves, and it is cut.
Puts it to Buggy again. Lowers his head. Look at this guy. Before I forget for the umpteenth time, Jennifer Johnston was the homecoming queen here at Blairsville. Congratulations to Jennifer in the homecoming court. Fine, fine uh, festivities, uh, well put together here at Blairsville. And our congratulations to Jennifer Johnston. Right now, Homer Center with a big, big, big third down and two. Look for them maybe to go to the right again and attack the left side of the Blairsville defense. from your center, Ryan Switcherelli, to Estrella. And there's a lot of pressure on those young men, keep in mind, too. And uh, that's when you have a maybe a fumbled snap, but Estrella handled it, picked up the first down. He's gained some big yardage tonight on the ground, but none bigger than that one yard he just gained. And he's got a good job for the yard. Uh, set of downs just back behind the quarterback. You see where she pins to the right side. Blairsville, I believe, with two timeouts remaining, less than two and a half minutes to play. Again, Pirates leading the Cardinals three to one. We'll pick up on our Pirate coverage again uh, Sunday afternoon from St. Louis. Right now, it's Homer Center football, second and ten. Fourth and less than one from their own 41-yard line. This one on third down and what seven to go. Tim Jones picking up the necessary eight yards for the first. 147 on the clock. Wildcats lead at 12-7 on the formation. Man on the wing on the left side. And a split receiver to the right, but the split of stays on the ground. And Buggy lugs the ball right behind his offensive line, behind Patterson, behind Zuccarelli. If on the uh, right, Blairsville can stop the clock one more time, 90 seconds on the uh, clock, Homer Center really should have this game wrapped up. If they hang on to the football, there's nothing Blairsville can do. If I'm uh, the Wildcats, I have Mistretta just kneel on it right now.
deep blow because Mikey put his head down and delivered a big blow to a couple of players on the defenders. One more point, too. We haven't uh, mentioned it, Jack. Homer Center being very effective on the ground tonight with uh, without the services one of, of one of their leading ball carriers, Dan Sniffy, the junior, who's been brilliant the past week or two. Yeah, he's been a lot better. I don't know if we mentioned it on the pregame show, but uh, Dan really had a great game last week. Under 22 yards here for Buggy. Power eye formation. Michael lines up in the back. He's on the line of scrimmage. He only had the three five seconds remaining. Buggy had 63 yards in the first half, but 17 yards to 64 yards here in the second half. And Homer Center in the power eye formation, although Mike Malone, you could almost classify him as the offensive safety. Yeah, he's the guy that uh, in case something happens and there's a fumble and somebody's going the other way, he's the designated tackle. He's the DT. I don't know that Homer Center has to run a play. Yep, there it is, and they're not going to have to. They just come up to the line of scrimmage and the kicking away. And, Last week, Homer Center spoiled Salzburg's homecoming, and they're spoiling Blairsville's homecoming. It's going to be only the right now. Homer Center has won it. Uh, well, the Wildcats have won it. 12-7 over the Bobcats. The final score is the uh, Blairsville last year.